everyone. Today we're going to be going over uh, part three. I think this is part three of our safety module. And we are talking about emergency protocols for the BL2 suite. And specifically, we're talking about um, rooms Title Hall 201, 202, 203, and 204. Now, some general information in an emergency. Don't panic. You want to listen to any instructions that are given to you by your TA, instructor, or myself. My office is here in the suite, so if you're in the suite when something happens, there's a very good chance that I'm going to be here unless it happens late at night or something. And we want to give, uh, you want to follow all given instructions that are given to you by either the TA, instructor, laboratory coordinator, environmental health and safety, or the like. Um, in short, you want to make sure that uh, we get you out of the building if necessary, or uh, through any issues that we have safely. Keep note of some of our emergency numbers. First thing you want to know, 9911. From our university phones, we do have to dial 9 first to dial outside of the university. So 9911 is uh, for emergency number. Uh, when you're going into the university, and we're not actually notifying those outside of the university, uh, 4444 is the emergency number for University Police Department. 4242 is the non-emergency number. 5555 is environmental health and safety. And 4073 is my direct line. If something happens in the lab, and I believe in spills and spill control, we did mention that for large spills, uh, EHS has to be called. But this is mostly fire and active shooting, this, uh, this bit of module. So when we're talking about fire and active shooting, if a fire alarm goes off, everyone should automatically be notified. If the fire alarm goes off in the building, we follow the fire protocols. You don't have to pick up a phone. However, I wanted to throw these numbers up once again, just in case. Uh, mostly so you can see him again. Now, in the event of an emergency starting in the lab, you inform the University Police Department, Environmental Health and Safety, and the Laboratory Coordinator. For instance, if you're in the lab with your TA and the TA or a fellow student collapses, the first thing you should do is call 4444. Very first thing. And explain the situation to them. That will then allow them to get the ball rolling on things like an ambulance medic here. Once you're done with that, you then call 4073 if I've not already been notified. And then you call 5555 for environmental health and safety. That way, everyone is informed as to what actually is going on. The first thing you should always call, though, is the UPD, since UPD has the ability to... Get the ball rolling on multiple fronts. Oftentimes, if you call them, they're going to call me. They're then going to call the fire department, uh, police, that type of thing. Now, a bit of the layout. Title Hall 2, uh, 201, 202, 203, 204, 207, 209, and 210 are all sealed off from the rest of the floor when the doors are closed. These are doors that you can only get in if you're already inside. You can leave them but you can't get back in, or they require swipe access, and only certain people have swipe access. For Title Hall 201, 202, uh, well, I shouldn't say 202. 202 doesn't actually have a, an asset, an access out. For Title Hall 201, 202, uh, 203, 204, those who have access to that are myself, the other BIMS laboratory coordinator, the professors, the course director, and the TAs. If it's not one of those people, they don't actually have access to the room itself. Title Hall 201, 202, 203, 204, and 207 are all BL2 rated laboratories. We did go over BL2 safety protocol in a previous video. Um, what's nice and bad and kind of odd about the layout is that uh, Title Hall 202, which is our prep room, does not have a direct access to other places. Uh, specifically, it has access to other places, but it doesn't have access to non-BL2 sites. It has access to Title Hall 201, 204, and 203, and those rooms have access to other 
um, or they have access to the hallway or the mezzanine. Um, the other downside is that Tidal Hall 201, 204, 207, and 210 all join up with each other. So if you have access to one, you have access to all of them. Let's talk some fire emergencies. In our lab, we do use Bunsen burner, and the open flame of a Bunsen burner poses a fire hazard. Tidal Hall 201 and 204 have natural gas piped into the laboratory benches. If you're in the autoclave room, which is Tidal Hall 203, or the prep room, which is Tidal Hall 202, or my office, which is Tidal Hall 202A, you do not have access to natural gas. You do, however, uh, have access to the labs, which have the natural gas. The gas shutoff valves are in a TH-201 and TH-204. The one in 201 is uh, just after the sink on your left as you walk in, and it's on the wall next to lab coat storage, whereas Tidal Hall 204 is right next to the SDS stand directly on your left as you enter the room. Some basic firefighting equipment that we have in the lab. Each teaching lab is equipped with a fire blanket and emergency shutoff valve. Fire extinguishers are in the hallway and the mezzanine of Tidal Hall the labs themselves do not have dedicated fire extinguishers. The use of fire extinguisher is through the acronym PASS, where you pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep side to side. In the event of a major fire emergency, you may be required to leave. We are going to go over the exit protocols for each of the rooms, since you might be in any of these rooms. The reason I say you might be in any of these rooms is with COVID, our entrance protocol into Tidal Hall 201 has an exit protocol that goes through Tidal Hall 202 and 203. So you exit via the autoclave room and you exit via the prep room. So in the event of a fire, you may be in one of those rooms uh, and need to exit separately than those in Tidal Hall 201. Tidal Hall 201 has three exits, a door leading to the second floor mezzanine and the grand staircase, a door leading to the prep room right next to it, which is Tidal Hall 202, and a door in the back of the room that is closest to the, uh, the windows that leads to Tidal Hall 204. Our general exit protocol is to exit via the door to the second floor mezzanine and leave the building via the grand staircase and meet outside with your class TA or whoever else is in the lab near the ROTC building, which is across the road. The alternate exit protocol is to exit through the second floor mezzanine, but walk to the opposite side of the building, to the north stair near the faculty offices, go down the stairs that way, and then exit uh, the building across the uh, parking and near the ECMS building. You never use an elevator when in a fire, so all of our exit protocols are always using stairs. In the case of the grand staircase, if for some reason the fire, uh, there's a curtain that comes down, it's a large fire curtain. If that is closed off, that is to prevent the fire on one of the other floors, or specifically this floor, from spreading to another floor. Do not use the grand staircase in that sense. Uh, use the alternate exit protocol. For Tidal Hall 202 and 202A, if you're in my office or if you're in the prep room, reminder that Tidal Hall 202A is my office, and Tidal Hall 202 does not have direct access to the second floor halls. You'll have to go through one of the three exits, um, either in Tidal Hall 203, 204, 201. Tidal Hall 202 does have three exits with four doors, one door leading to my office, which is a dead end, and then you have an exit leading to Tidal Hall 201, 203, and 204. The general exit protocol for prep room is to exit via the autoclave room, which is Tidal Hall 203, out into the second floor hallway, make a right, and make a way for the grand staircase at the mezzanine. If for some reason you can't get to the grand staircase or if the uh, curtain has been pulled down, the alternate exit is again at the far side of the building, at the very other end of the building, down the north stairwell, meeting near ECMS. Uh, Tidal Hall 203 is basically the same thing. It is the autoclave room. It has a archway that leads into the prep room and an exit that leads out to the hallway of the 
Title Hall. You exit the Title Hall and follow the same protocols as Title Hall 202. 204 is the most accessible of the rooms. It has four exits, a door that leads to the second floor hallway, a door that leads to the prep room, a door that leads to Title Hall 201, and a door that leads to Title Hall 207. You exit out the door to the hallway and then proceed to the grand staircase or to the north stair, making your way down. Now, an active shooter. We do not anticipate active shooters, but we feel, that should be feel, F-E-E-L, you should be prepared just in case. The BL2 suite, which are rooms 201 through 207, and the door to Tidal Hall 210 automatically lock when closed. This means that if all four doors are closed, there is not a way, five doors, excuse me, if all five doors are closed, there's not a way from someone on the outside to get in unless they break the door. This means that in an active shooter, our labs are some of the better places to be. This is also because we have the uh, prep room, which does not have any windows. So if there's an active shooter on the outside of the building, there is a space where we can go into that is surrounded by walls. This is also the case for uh, where that is also our retreat point for tornadoes and hurricanes. You shouldn't be here for any hurricanes, but in the case of a water spout or a tornado and you have to shelter in place, our shelter in place location is in the prep room, since that is the most sturdy point in our uh, area. The downside is once someone has access to any one of the uh, entrances in Tidal Hall 201, 204, 207, or 210, you have access to the entire suite. Now, if you're in Tidal Hall 201, the door to the mezzanine should be closed and locked and all lights are turned off. You are then designated to move to an area without line of sight from the mezzanine. This is as you walk into Tidal Hall 201. On your right side is the uh, lab coat storage, and next to that is the biological safety cabinet. That is the meetup point there. Uh, that is also to the left of the teaching table. If we don't, ha uh, if we have to move into the prep room, we can do so. Do not panic. Remember, the suite is one of the safest places to be during an active shooter. For 202 or 202A. It's, again, easy. It does not have direct access to the public areas of Tidal Hall. It doesn't have windows either. My office is a little bit of a cubicle dungeon inside of a larger prep room dungeon. Um, it is the retreat location for all of Tidal Hall 201 to 204 and most likely also Tidal Hall 207. In the event of a shooter, we hide behind the prep bench between the bench top and the biological safety cabinet. For Title Hall 203, it's the autoclave room. It's the second smallest of our rooms, the only thing smaller being my office. The autoclave room only has access to the Title Hall 202 and the hallway. The door to Title Hallway should always be locked. This is one of those things that very few people have access to. I believe it's myself and Microprep and the other laboratory coordinator. That's it. In the event of an active shooter, retreat into Title Hall 202 and follow the protocols for Title Hall 202. Title Hall 204 is arguably the most dangerous of the three rooms because it has access to Title Hall 201, 202, 207. Uh, and that means that it's one of the, if not the biggest joining point. Similar to Title Hall 201, you make sure that the door is locked. It should automatically lock, but you want to make sure that it does lock. Close the lights, turn them off, uh, close shutters on the windows, and then move to an area without line of sight to the hallway. As you walk in, this is to your left. Uh, that is with the uh, lab coat storage and our prep supplies on the left in the cabinetry, next to the door to Title Hall 202, and opposite the biological safety cabinet and if need be, retreat into Tidal Hall 202. Hopefully we never have to use this. Hopefully we never have to uh, shelter in place, but it's better that you know what to do in our labs since we are BL2 rated, and we do have some extra protocols that need to be taken in place should the worst happen.